Okay, good morning, everyone, and welcome to chapel this morning. We have a very special guest here. Uh, mayor Deanna Reed is here. She's the mayor of Harrisonburg, and we thank her for taking time out of her very busy schedule to talk to us a little bit this morning. So, uh, and to share her story with us. So I thought maybe as a little bit of an introduction, um, I would say a little bit about the first time I met uh, Mayor Reed, it was at our, actually our ground, groundbreaking for the elementary school. And she was at that groundbreaking and I'm sitting in my office in that building now that is renovated. Oh. So it's kind of nice to have have you here, Mayor, to uh, you know, note, note that we are in the building where you were at the groundbreaking. So welcome. Thank you. And maybe good for you to share a little bit, of, uh, just as an introduction, about how long you have been the mayor um, and maybe a little bit about the work you did before you had this role. Right. So first, uh, good morning. Thank you for having me. Um, yes, I have been mayor. This is my third term now. So uh, I have been mayor four years um, on council for going on my second term. So uh, it'll be eight years when I'm finished. And before I got started with being in uh, as mayor, I, I am uh, the full time um, director for um, community and school partnerships with On the Road Collaborative. A lot of people think that me being mayor is my full-time job, but it's not. Um, I am the full-time director of community and school partnerships for On the Road Collaborative, which is an after-school program that runs uh, in Harrisonburg City Schools. We run in the middle schools and the, and the high school. So that's what I've, uh, I'm doing and been doing uh, since I've been back home in Harrisonburg. Okay, that's good to know. So as you uh, may remember, our theme this year is telling our stories, hearing our stories, and particularly focusing on times when we felt a sense of belonging yes. and times when perhaps we were not um, feeling like we belonged in a particular situation. So I wondered if you might share a little bit about times you remember in your life when you did not, uh, were not being included or didn't have a sense of belonging and then how you handled that, what you did. Yeah, um, so that, you know, that that has been um, throughout my life. You know, there's been times that I felt like that. I mean, uh, I, I think everybody knows that I'm, I'm, I'm from Harrisonburg, born and raised here in Harrisonburg. Um, and so Harrisonburg was very different when I was growing up here. Um, um, you know, we now, Harrisonburg is very uh, diverse. Um, but when I was growing up here, we, it, it was not. Um, and so I remember, um, especially um, going through high school, that there were uh, plenty of times where I was um, not welcome to participate um, in certain um, organizations or, um, yeah, I mean, just not being um, invited um, because I was Black. Um, and that that was something that that really, um, I think, pushed me um, into making sure that all voices were are represented at the table. Um, and I talk about that a lot, um, especially now um, that I um, that I have the platform that I have, um, because I remember how that felt uh, being um, not included or um, not invited, um, that stays with you. Um, you feel like, well, well, why can't I attend this? You know, and they don't, you know, I'm a nice person, I'm a good person, um, but why can't I attend this? And it'll be some, something as they don't like the color of your skin or uh, black people are not allowed to, to be a part of this. Um, and so I made, you know, I really made that, uh, part of uh, of why I ran for city council um, because the history behind me running is there there has never been a black woman um, to um, be on city council and I made that history I'm the first um, mm -hmm. and so it was important for me to do that so that little black girls or little girls of color or little girls in general uh, right. would 
see somebody that looks like them um, at this level of leadership. Yeah. Well, we thank you for that because that does make an impact on so many young young people. Um, on the flip side, have there been times and in what kind of situations have you have you felt like you've been invited and embraced and, and a sense of belonging? Maybe talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's interesting um, when you do put yourself at the table that people are very open to that. Um, you know, I, I remember, um, uh, my, one of my first organizations, uh, when I came back home that I really wanted to be a part of was the Harrisonburg, um, women's service league here in, um, Harrisonburg. And back when I was growing up, it was called, um, the junior women's league. Mm -hmm. Um, and they, uh, I, I don't remember when I, they did a lot of work in the community. They were, you know, women of, of, of statue um, and grace, and they did a lot of service, but there were no black women that I could remember being in that group. And so when I got back home, um, I wanted to be a part of that group. Um, and I, and they opened me with, with open arms and I was, mm -hmm. uh, I was their president at one time, um, and I was able to to bring other people, women of color, into that group. But they loved. I mean, we really formed um, a sisterhood um, because yeah. it had nothing to do with race. It was like serving um, the community. Right. That was our passion. Um, and so I, I I've, I've appreciated um, the time that I had with them because we really forged, for, formed a bond with each other that had nothing to do with skin color. It was just our heart, passion for mm -hmm. serving. Um, and you find that more now um, right. than what you think. That's great to hear. Mm -hmm. Do you, can you think of stories or a story from your life uh, in the past that made a particular impact on you, sort of helped shape who you are? You um, stories. Um, I, you know, whenever I'm asked that question, I always think about people yeah. um, and, and maybe the, the stories come around the people. Um, one in particular person, and I always, I always talk about her, um, is my, um, my only African-American teacher I've ever had um, in my life, um, she was my high school teacher. Um, her name was Barbara Blakey, um, <laughs> my Harrisonburg High School teacher. Um, and she really just watched over um, all the black students at Harrisonburg High School. Now, back at that time, it wasn't many of us, right? It was probably in my senior class, we only had 11. Um, but she made sure that we all had the opportunities that others had. Um, and one story that I can tell is that um, she would just get, she would just tell our, our parents, um, Dina needs to be a part, uh, she needs to go on this trip. And I remember I was in the uh, 11th grade and I came home and my mom said, okay, you need to pack your bags. Um, you're going away for a week. And I was like, where am I going? <laughs> and, and she said, Miss Blakey called and said that you need to go to Longwood College and you're going to stay a week down there for Girl State. Mm. I had no idea what Girl State was. My mother had no idea what Girl State was. But because Miss Blakey called and said she needs to be a part of this, mm -hmm. it was no question. They right. packed me up and they took me and I went to girl <laughs> and I abs it I absolutely loved it because that was my first time learning about government. It was my first time being on a college campus spending the night. It just opened up uh, an opportunity that I would not have had on my own. Mm -hmm. um, and so you know you need uh, those people in your life that are going to kind of nudge you along to do things that you may not 
feel comfortable to do yourself. Um, and she was that for me. I mean, she shaped me. She shaped me into the woman that I am today. That's beautiful. We all need people like that. Yeah. Yes. I actually know Barbara Blakey, not real well. Her husband and my dad were good friends. See, yes. Yeah. She was an amazing, she was an amazing woman. Yeah, she was a really great yeah. woman. Yeah. 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 Um, maybe one last question I would ask you, and I know this might be a, a tough one to answer, but during this time of such division in communities, um, I wonder if you have any advice for our students and our faculty about mm -hmm. how we can continue to do our good work and to mend some of those divisions. Yeah, it's tough. Um, and, and, you, and you do just that. You continue to do the good work um, because I really feel like that's, that's what we're supposed to do, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's why we're here on this earth, um, to do good for one another. Um, and it's hard right now, mm -hmm. right? It's hard because there's so much division, so much anger and hatred going on right now. But I do believe, you know, love outweighs the hate. Mm -hmm. um, and even though it's tough, I think that as long as we make a, uh, a decision, a conscious de decision to every day, I'm going to do good, right? I'm going to show love. I'm going to be a light um, that no matter what is going on around us, that that will shine bright. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we just have to continue to do it. There are days, trust me, these last this last week, there are times when I was like, I just cannot do anything today. But then I'll get that phone call. Right. Mm -hmm somebody encouraging me, or I'll get an email of somebody who needs help, right? Um, and I, I can't stop. I can't stop. And it, this is all going to work out right? because I, I do believe it. I, I believe that although things are very hard right now, I believe if we just continue to love each other, mm -hmm. to do good, to be kind to each other, it will, it will, the bright light will shine and it will drown all of the hatred and the anger away. So you just can't stop, even though it can be discouraging. Don't yeah. stop. Right. Very inspiring for us because I think we all have been that in that place that you described. So help yeah, help yeah. Words to us. Well, we just thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. And I hope we can continue this relationship with you and Eastern Midnight School. You're an important person for our community. So thank you again for being here. You know, I love Eastern Midnight School. I love you guys. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Yeah. And you know, anytime you need anything, you know where to find me. Okay, great. Thank you.